I'm well, speaking with Robert Miller of the I Above uh, NPC, and he's at Exponential 2025. And behind him is his brand new aircraft, the Bush Ranger. Um, Robert, why? Why yes, bother? Yes. What's Hi. it for? So, Gary, it's designed for, it's designed for anti poaching. It's a purpose built anti poaching aircraft. Um, it was designed to, to specifically meet the needs of operating in the Southern African bushveld. Okay, and I think you're at the additive, um, you're at the HB Additive Manufacturing Solutions and Forecast 3D booth. What does that mean? So, it means that the airframe is totally 3D printed. It's a commercially viable two meter, fully printed, uh, 3D printed VTOL aircraft. Um, what we realized very early on is in the bush, as you will well know, carbon fiber foam doesn't last very long. We needed something that was modular, something that was really, really tough and something that was easy to repair on site. So we, we started off on an additive manufacturing avenue, tried every single solution possible and eventually HP got it right for us. What, what was it about HP that got it right? What is it that I couldn't do of, for argument's sake a bamboo lab, something or other? So I'll show you, and I'm just ask come closer. So if you have a look here, I don't know if you can see my fingers through the airframe. The skin on the airframe yes. is only, it's 0.8 millimeters thick. Uh, let me grab a few of my second. So it's incredibly light. Um, I mean, it's paper thin and it's, it's as strong as carbon fiber or a composite material but it doesn't have the weaknesses or the drawbacks of foam and carbon fiber. So we managed to produce a very, very light, very, very strong, very, very durable airframe that's easy to repair, um, easy to modify if we need to, without the, draw without the drawbacks of the other materials. How many yeah. iterations of this airframe did you make then? This, so you said, you're suggesting this isn't the first one out of the box. <laughs> I know you've been going. We've been talking about this for years. So I'm quite intrigued as to how many iterations you went through to get to this point. Um, we, tried S, we tried early days. We tried MJF uh, on the HP 5200 series. We tried SLA. We tried SLS. We tried FDM. I think we've printed about 60 airframes. We've done ABS. We've done ABS. We've printed about 60 airframes. We've spent about two to 300,000 hours of design on it. And we well, finally got it right. And we got it right. Um, as far as the, the HP 5600 goes, there was one iteration of the airframe. The first one is actually now going into flight testing in South Africa. So this is very much an overnight success then. <laughs> so yeah. I, I just, no, it's, I mean, it's overnight. It just took no effort at all. I mean, how easy can it be? That's amazing. So you say it's gone into flight testing. That was going to be my next question. How many how many hours have you achieved so far with this machine? We've probably done about 30 or 40 hours of hovering. Hover testing, yes. Hover testing with the aircraft. We have transitioned successfully. Uh, with the aircraft it's now going through a hundred hours of flight testing and i'm seeing am i seeing um dual uh pitos there or behind yeah. you so, so let's have a look dual pitos on the airframe the airframe will carry dual gps um no control surfaces at all it relies totally on thrust vectoring for maneuverability because you know very well with south africa in the bush belt if we have ailerons and we have control surfaces Someone will pick it up under the wing, throw it in the back of a bucky, and that's the end of the airframe. <laughs> yeah, I, I do know. <laughs> so, Very true. Some of the other unique features, the wings fold. The idea is not to put it into a carry case. You don't want to be packing up a drone in a carry case when an elephant takes exception to you being there. <laughs> so wings fold in. The area between the two front rotors fits perfectly in the back of a bucky. So pick it up, fold the wings, put it into a bucky. Um, the wings are modular. You can extend the wingspan to 3.5 meters. Um, that's not going to fit in the bucky. Uh, you can swap out any segment of the airframe that breaks in the field if, if you need to. Um, we just wanted something that was really, really going to be tough enough to succeed. Yeah. Show, show them the folding points. Where's the folding points? You can have a look here. So it actually folds around the motor mount. Yeah on the airframe and it'll fall underneath sorry gary and when robert's saying when robert's saying a bucky i'm just just going to translate for the rest of the world he means a pickup <laughs> truck 
That's what it means. It means a pickup truck. truck. Yeah, that's, that's what that is. And so, what's that about a meter? Would that be a meter and a little bit, or about a meter across them and folded? One two five zero. Oh. One two five zero. Oh. Okay, and that's most standard Toyotas and things like that that we see all yeah. the time. Um, yeah. Range. Oh, that's a. Perfectly between that's the wheel so and the. Okay, so that's that's the width. What about the length of it? It'll um it'll, it'll fit in most fits beds. In, fits in most beds. Fits perfectly in the back of a Ford Ranger with about an inch to spare. My car. <laughs> okay, okay. Now, have have you done any ultraviolet testing on this material? Because you're bob on right. Ultraviolet's a big problem for us. Yeah. So. The material is quite ultraviolet resistant, the HP uh, PA12, but the airframe actually gets wrapped with a vehicle wrap with UV protection. So what oh, you're seeing okay. here, sorry. Sorry, sorry, what you're seeing here is the raw airframe that came off the HP printer just with the motor mounts and the accessories. It's it's there's still reinforcement that goes in. There's still a complete wrap that goes over the airframe. And so we call this what? It's a, a quad tilt. What what? What airframe would we call it? What what particular type? Actually, been debating that with the autopilot guys. Uh, <laughs> rear transition quad. Rear transition quad. Do those props align themselves with the airflow when uh, when they stop? Yeah. Or uh, so do they in, stop in, in a forward position? Yeah. So this has one of been one of the interesting things about getting this aircraft to transition. Is technically it doesn't transition in in a conventional way. Um, what we realized very early on is we needed rotors that were very, very efficient for lifting to give us the flight times we were aiming at. Um, so these rotors are what we call the heavy side of the fridge. They do all the main work during VTOL, and that's all they're there to do. The articulating rotors at the back do your maneuverability and the control. So theoretically, when this aircraft starts to fly, all it does is it accelerates in a forward direction until it achieves its angle of attack and, st and stability at an altitude and then just spins down its front rotors. It doesn't actually have to do a full transition like a normal transition aircraft. And then those two rear motors are handling yeah. roll, pitch, and yaw once you're, yeah. once you're flying. So what happens if one of them fails? We deploy the parachute and we come down. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. All right. So that's not a... That's not a, a, a controllable situation. I completely understand why uh, why yeah. you've done that um, yeah. to, to get this hangar rash from, from operations. And well, how we many are, hours, well, maybe go on after you, sorry. Robert. What we are considering, and it, it was again um, survivability, is to put winglets on the rear um, motor pods. So if you do lose power, you can actually glide down. But someone's going to try pick it up by those winglets. <laughs> I see. No, I completely understand, and I don't really want to comment on it. But I completely understand what you're <laughs> what you're getting at. But that's that. But be, being rugged and useful is 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 exactly what's um is exactly what's needed in the bush, yeah. uh, and to fly again and then again and again. How many hours do you think you're going to get out of this material per airframe? How many hours will the airframe itself last? Uh, yeah. Or flight time. Or have you done? I, I I would reckon an airframe like this, depending on how much abuse it takes, would have a three to four year life. Um, and the what are the numbers for uh, flight time? And then we haven't spoken about sensors. What sort of sensors would you have on board? So flight, flight time, time number, you know, how high our blast and all that, and sensors. Okay, so flight time, calculated flight time with the current battery, with a 50 amp hour battery, should be giving us two and a half to three hours. Um, as we all know, in the real world, it's not always as easy as calculating. With some of the batteries that we've now found at the show that could be pushed to three and a half, four hours flight time, uh, with about a 30 to 40 minute hover. Sensors, you have a payload bay here for something like a Sony, high resolution Sony ILX camera. You've got another payload bay in the front here for your optical and thermal payloads over there. And there has already been a modification to have an additional payload over here. Um, we've partnered with organizations like EWT and the Endangered Wild and the International Crane Foundation, and we're working with Roytech Radar currently to develop a SAR radar for snare detection, and that's actually designed to go into the airframe oh. over there. 
snare detection that's very interesting again for um for for viewers overseas you 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 well, everyone's overseas compared to us but you you really would not believe the amount of snares there are out out in the wild and no pun intended yeah. the snare yeah. problem is absolutely enormous um and funny enough i'm going to do something for the ewt tomorrow but that's another thing um and that's the endangered wildlife trust so that's that's yeah. fantastic that snare detection though how will that, because the snares I normally come up with, this conversation is going to digress. The snares I come across are normally in a fence line where two fences come together and they're in the corners where the animals are naturally naturally uh, corralled. How, um, I wonder how it's going to detect the difference between the fence and the snare. So what we're looking at, so this, we've, we've identified two main snaring tra strategies with Endangered Wildlife Trust. One, in trees through through a route the animals take. And yes, you're correct in the corners with fence. Now, the idea is to actually use AI to get a baseline on the metal profile of the areas we fly. And what we're looking for is a change in that baseline. So as soon as we, we detect a slightly okay. different okay. pattern, a ranger will be, yeah. will be sent to investigate. Wow, that's, um, that's very cool. That's very cool indeed. That is very cool. Um, I look forward to to following that with them. Um, very, very great interest. So this is the you've got a prototype flying. It's going through hover testing. It exists. It's in the world. How long till till somebody can get to open their wallets and, and buy one? So the plan is now in when I get back to South Africa, it will start extended flight testing. If everything goes according to plan. The first deployment is planned for July, August in Kufuri with Endangered Wildlife Trust. Uh, that's on the conservation side. And then there will be commercial airframes launching within the next three to six months. Did you say in uh, Shlishlui then? Uh, Kufuri in Zambia. Kufuri, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, in Zambia. I was, going to, I was hoping you said Shlishlui you know, up near me. I would have been, I would have been down to come and have a look. Uh, that's that's on that. the cards as well, actually, Gary. Uh, in the near future. Okay. Cool. All right. Well, that's that's amazing. What else? Before I let you go back to 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 making the point of the show, what else do you want to tell us about this machine? So, we 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 want to use this to actually formulate a blueprint for wide scale drone deployment into conservation. And one of the things we identified when we were identifying what the aircraft needed to do. There's no guidelines. Everyone is coming into South Africa with good intentions and no one is really getting it right. And I'm not saying we're going to get it right, but we want something to come out of this. So we're working with the organizations like SAPS, like the Conservation Authorities, Endangered Wildlife Trust, to use 15 of these aircrafts to formulate a comprehensive blueprint that will give you a fighting chance to actually come in. The other thing we've, we've realized is conservation is more than just an animal or a species. It's an entire ecosystem. It's also the rural communities living in that ecosystem. So we're spending a lot of time trying to simplify the flight process for this aircraft and the maintenance so we can start training up people in the local communities around the reserves to be the next generation of pilots and next generation of repair engineers. So what we say is we have a number of partners. I think you've seen on our, on our partners like SolidWorks, HP, Sony, MECAD Systems, to name a few. They've got us to where we are. Now we're actually ready to take flight. They've also now potentially given the public and the man in the street a tool to do something positive for conservation. So we're, we're now kicking off fundraising to put 15 of these into the air. Um, and we're hoping the public will support us in this venture. And then they'll make, do the, are the HP machines to enable you to make these in South Africa or do you have one? Uh, there, there currently there is one in South Africa that will potentially be upgraded in the next month or two um, that will allow us to produce the airframes locally. Well, that's that's fantastic, Robert. Um, thanks very much for having a chat with me. I'm definitely going to follow this very hard now. Now that um, And thanks, Alan. Alan Ball's there as well. And if you're in South Africa, you know who Alan Ball is. Um, there, there he is. <laughs> um, Gary, thanks, thanks very for much. Us on the show. And we're... Yeah. It's only a pleasure. We'll speak to you again. We'll follow this with very great interest. Alan and Robert, thanks very much. Enjoy a successful show and have a very safe flight home. Thanks, Gary. Thanks, Gary. Bye.
Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.